guys, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. You loved our next guest in the Bourne series, Save the Last Dance, Dexter, Silver Linings Playbook. So much. She's been in so many great things. And now, Julia Stiles is back for the second season of the steamy and backstabby Riviera. Let's take a look. This is the Riviera, darling. People get away with everything. Georgie? Georgie! I thought you weren't coming back. Have you ever known me to run away from anything? She's hiding something. I know it. You're Georgina Keos, aren't you? To new friends. You don't know that woman at all. We all have our secrets, darling. Do you have anything you want to tell me? I can take you down at any time, Georgina. You really want to know the truth? Everybody, please welcome the great Julia Stiles. Hey. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Congrats on the second season of the show. I'm wondering if when you were shooting the first season, if you were looking around and you were looking at everything that you guys had at your disposal for a television show, and you're like, are they going to give us the money to make a second season of this thing or what? It looks expensive, doesn't it? It looks insanely expensive and, and beautiful as well. Good. That's what we were going for. But it's a rarity that TV, I mean, TV, usually you get that beautiful pilot. But then after that pilot, you really have to settle into one location, maybe two, and they can't really do much more to add to add to it because everything the money, the rest of the money's gone into the next eight or ten episodes. Right. And this, you guys really seem like you can you can do it in every episode. It gets bigger and more expensive in season two. Uh, we have more yachts, we have helicopters, we have beautiful vistas of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, we have right, a bigger there a, cast. It, there was a helicopter moment as well in the first episode of the second season, and I remember thinking, like, God, they have helicopters in this as well. Oh yeah, um, I got to I got to ride in one a few times. It's uh, quite fun. No, it's amazing. Um, but the the title character of the show is the French Riviera, and so. Um, I, the appeal is the extraordinary amount of wealth that these people have and what it causes them to do. Um, the, the concept behind the show was um, behind every great fortune is a great crime. So, you know, we, we, the, the crimes get deeper and deeper as the show gets more and more glittery, if that makes sense. And your character sort of gets more involved in unraveling them and closer to them in some ways and sort of has her own rhymes, if you will. I would like to say that she... So she starts off in season one very um, innocent and maybe naive, um, but then because of everything that happens um, and, is, and, and all the tragedy that happens to her, um, she is corrupted by her environment. And, and I want to say, like, rises to the occasion, but in a bad way. Um, <laughs> she breaks bad. Yeah, she breaks bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really, that's what we, we were hoping to see this woman sort of slide into um, uh, bad behavior, and despite herself. And so uh, season one en ends with, I, th I think I can say it because it's out there already. Um, she... She has been trying to f find uh, undercover the mystery behind her husband's death, and when she finally finds out that her stepson was involved, um, she lures him onto a sailboat, pretending to be sort of playing into his weird fantasy and crush on her, and gets him to confess, and then says to him, I, I knew that's what happened. I just wanted to hear you say it, and she stabs him. So now, season two, we pick up right where we left off, and there's no escape for this woman, she now has to figure out how she's going to get away with murder. And that's not only legally in, in, in terms of the authorities, but her own conscience, because she goes back to this house and back to the family and watches them all start wondering what happened to their brother and their son and, and then realizing that he's dead and she's the one who's responsible for it. And that eats away at her. And she's also made some new friends as well. Uh, along her way, right? Well, the pro we, we introduce a lot of new characters. There's a whole other family um, that is to remind us how thick the grapevine is in this society, that everybody knows everybody's business, and that it's really hard to keep a secret. 
so she's the walls are kind of closing in on her. And then Will Arnett um, joins us this season, and he plays my character's uncle, um, who is American, and 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 uh, comes comes to with her to the south of France, shows up, and is basically like her reality check, and kind of says to her, "Who are you, and what have you become?" Wait, he's a good. Will Arnett plays a good guy. He plays a good guy, and a serious character, by the way, too. I mean, I know he's known for his comedy work, well, but no, it's but quite. I mean, he's just so good at playing the bad a guy, a comedic sleaze bag, or right. just like a recovering sleaze bag, like he did in his own show. He's, I mean, he's not that in real life, but I mean, he's just so good at playing that character and having him in Riviera, I would immediately imagine he's showing up to be like, how can we blackmail people to well, get some money out of them? Yeah, no, well, there's a bit of, uh, there's a bit of like, why is Uncle Jeff loafing around this mansion with no job? <laughs> there's a bit of that, um, but. Okay, now we're in Will Arnett <laughs> character territory. But, but he's, he's really there to be like, uh, wait, you have a driver? Wait, you have a Ferrari? Wait, this is weird. Wait, what happened to your stepson? Wait, why are you fighting with that woman? And then eventually, um, yeah, he just, he, he kind of puts things back into perspective for this woman. How was the show initially pitched to you? Because when I watched it, I felt like in talking about it with you and hearing that it's like, it's a, it's a Breaking Bad type character in the sense that she starts naive and then becomes much more becomes more of a criminal that seems like the sort of perfect casting for you because I feel like early in your career you were often cast as kind of like for lack of a better phrase the girl next door the naive one who sort of gets wrapped up in something and ends up being the good person at the end and later we've seen you become or play more serious parts or more or rougher women that are rougher around the edges characters that are rougher around the edges right. it seems like you get the best of both worlds with this character yeah, yeah. I mean, I um, I didn't know that we were going to end up... That I, You never know if you're going to make more than one season of a show or how it's going to be received. And so for me to explore this character for what amounts to like 20 hours of TV, um, it sustains my interest. So, you know, I hope it does with audiences. But yeah, she's, she's very complex. And it's, she's not one thing or the other. She's not good or bad. And a lot of times when we were discussing... Um, things like what happens at the end of season one, the question of is Georgina sympathetic would come up. And I, my answer was like, I don't really care. I just want her to be compelling and I want us to understand her. And I actually fought really hard to have her not kill um, Adam in, in self-defense. There was a version where it was like self-defense. I wanted it to be that she really does this deliberately and it's out of seeking revenge. Um, and then we deal with her conscience later so she's not a sociopath. But that's what I'm saying. She's not, I love that she's not, one or the other. She's not good. She's not bad. She's she's an uh, otherwise good person who makes bad decisions. It's also not really your job as the and, and and maybe you think it is as the actress to make her sympathetic. It's your job to play the scene as it is, and it's the writer's job often to sort of give the character something else, either before or after, to make her actions more redeemable or understandable for the audience. Well, this is such an interesting topic to me because I think that that's um, why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, well it's just it's big. That's why I'm that's why I'm trying to figure out where to start. Yeah. Um, we love watching anti-heroes, right? There are plenty of examples of them. They're mostly male characters, right? Yeah. Because I I can think of examples of when you when you have a, a male character doing something illegal or quote unquote bad say in a gangster movie or as a Wall Street businessman, it's kind of like cool and sexy. But when you have a female character doing it, you'll see that the storytellers have to jump through hoops often to explain why she did it. Right. So um, yeah, I'm, I was gonna give an example of another TV show, but I won't do that because it's a really good show. But um, Well, also even like when they have to give an example or a, a reason for why he's doing something, they do that with Walter White as well. I mean, he's breaking the rules and he's gonna kill this person, but he has to save Jesse to mm. kill this person. Or he lets, uh, you know, what is the big thing that happens in Breaking Bad where he lets uh, Kristen, Kristen Ritter die Right, well, she like in the bed, but that's in order to essentially pull Jesse out of the addiction that he's in, and it's a horrible thing that he mm -hmm. does. But there's like a blurry line there as to what's happening mm -hmm. with female antiheroes. I feel like they're rarely al allowed to be as organized and put together as male antiheroes are. Right, they're always kind they're of like disheveled and figuring. And it's like, no, she could be just as sort I of think they're conniving not as. I think they're not, sorry to interrupt you. I no, think please. I feel like- I'm rambling. Oh my God, yeah. Um, no, no, you're not, you're not. I'm, I, 
just lost my train of thought. No, I. Um, I'll take the heat I for think that they're, one. they're the female characters aren't allowed to be as ruthless or calculating or sometimes like business like about what they're doing. If that. Makes yeah, sense. I would agree. I mean, the first anti-hero, female anti-hero that comes to my mind is like Charlize Theron in Young Adult, which is in some ways not in any way like a. Wall Street executive. Well, she was or a just like a drinker and a, she was just a bad girl, right? Wasn't she yeah, just like she her life was kind of a mess? A disaster. But she wasn't going out and doing mean or, or sort of destructive things, right? Domestic. And by the way, I'm not saying things. that people should go out stabbing people they don't like. That's not, we're not advocating that kind of behavior. You're a woman and you want to feel alive in the world, but you got to <laughs> go out and stab your stepbrother. Right, exactly. But I mean, I mean, honestly, for me, as particularly with our show, it comes down to, is it interesting to watch? You know, um, I think it's more, in- I, I, I thought it would be more interesting to have a, a Georgina finally take control and act, and act out what she needed in terms of getting over all this anger and grief that she had nowhere, you know, she had nowhere to direct it, um, as opposed, and do it that on purpose, as opposed to, um, oh no, he attacked me, and now I'm gonna, you know, do something that for some reason we think is more justifiable. Did and, you and, then, and by the way, that decision we now have to deal with for the entire second season. Yeah, you know, I don't think, I also think sometimes people confuse, and I'm not saying that your writers would, they're much smarter than me, uh, si- like sympathetic with relatable. And sympathetic is like or likable with relatable, right? But do we? But do we really? Well, do we really want to see? I, I think one of the appeals of the show, or at least to me, in 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 working on it, is it's not totally relatable. Like who has? It's true. Yeah. Who has it's a driver? Well. And who has like who has a driver every day of the week? Who has a villa with a pool and a helicopter and a yacht and blah blah? And who, you know, um, but. I do think that Georgina is the window into this world because she's the only American and she doesn't come from wealth, that um, she's relatable. And so then it becomes even more complicated when she starts to descend, as Will's character says, like, who are you? What have you become? She's now become murky because of this, this, her surroundings. Do you ever feel like, and this goes back to the question that I asked before about how you were cast earlier and then in the middle and and to now, do you ever feel like a role like this where you're doing 20 hours and obviously the writers have seen your body of work before that, that the character or your performance is ever in conversation with prior performances that maybe they are aware of or are interested in? Oh, interesting. Um, Not in Riviera, no. No, I mean... Like have you ever had a director be like, oh, like that thing you did in Silver Linings Playbook? Can you can you try something like that, or or that thing you did in this movie, or something like? Do has anyone ever mm, done that? Interesting. No, I mean, um, sometimes when I carry a gun in this show, I make jokes about the Jason Bourne movies, and that I'm like, it's okay, I've got gun training, um, but n- not so much. No, I mean, I, I yeah, I don't think so. Does every this is very tangential, but. Do you think Oh actually sorry oh, there was okay. a scene there was a scene in uh, season 1 um a couple times I point a gun at people in the show and also in season 2 and I had to remember that she wasn't trained like a spy if that makes sense like I was too used to doing the the Jason Bourne you pulled it out and spun it around and fired it in the air and kind, kind of and like, yeah it was did a roll. Like, tone it down a yeah. little bit <laughs> Do you, um, is every actor in LA gun trained at this point? Right. <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing in the world to think that like every actor could potentially be a spy of some kind. They're trained for it. Maybe they are. Who knows? I don't. Yeah, Fair that em- would be a good cover. Fair enough. Um, going into Riviera uh, season two, or what is it like for you to sort of spend what is it six months shooting the show? Uh, on the on the French Riviera with these helicopters and these mansions and these Ferraris and limos and drivers and then go back to your normal life. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard being me. Um, no, it really. Have you ever go back to your normal life and you're like, oh, damn, where's that driver? <laughs> um, that yeah. Helicopter. Well, it, it, oddly enough, okay. So obviously, it's a wonderful place to film. I love working on the show. I love being there. It's. I pinch myself with all the different locations that we get to go to. Um, but there is there, the work that's, what's funny is that there's like a contrast, you know, sometimes um, the streets, the, the windy streets uh, in the part of Europe that we film in uh, don't allow for equipment trucks, right? Or like we'll be shooting on a cliff overlooking the Mediterranean Sea or on a yacht or in a helicopter. And that means that we end up having to do like hair and makeup in the bushes. So there's, there's this weird that we're like, they don't, 
we don't have access to a bathroom, so people have to go and like pee in the woods. Um, so there's like a juxtaposition between so it's like not the wealth that's on camera. We present a lot of a lot of glitz and glamour, but there's still there's still some sort of gritty work to be done. Like a ragtag film crew, like trying to shoot. Kind a of, yeah, yeah, yeah. They always say that one of the worst places to shoot anything is on a boat. Have mm -hmm. you guys experienced anything like that while shooting some of the stuff on the boat? Is it difficult? Okay. Yes. Well. Um, I when I first when I read the pilot episode for season one, I was like, "Ooh, the south of France and fancy dresses and high heels, sign me up!" And then cut to the the, the first episode of season two, is we're recreating a shipwreck and like a big storm at sea. So the sailboat that I was on, where I killed the guy, dump his body overboard. The heavens open up and and I'm lost at sea. So we recreated that, and that meant that they built. It was pretty cool for the first like two hours, they they built this huge um, tent over the sailboat in an actual marina and had these giant water tanks that would chuck like 600 liters of water at me, which, if you don't know this, is enough force to knock over a medium-sized human being. Um, and it did, and this was going, and the, like, and at first it was really exciting for like an hour, and then 12 hours later, come dawn, I and for the third time I had gotten like knocked overboard, um, I was like, uh, I was like, what? What am I doing? Like, this is yeah. It was it was a surprise. And then also, this wasn't what I signed up for. I signed up. It was for the kind of like okay, yeah. This that. wasn't this wasn't quite as glamorous as I thought it was going to be. Um, but then I found out that the other actresses do had a couple scenes in um, in like a spa where they're getting twenty four karat gold face masks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, thanks guys. <laughs> I get to have get knocked over by fake tidal waves. Uh, for an entire evening, um, and you guys get your gold face mask, which I'm still waiting for. <laughs> One of the things that I love uh, about the show is that it's an old school soap opera in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I'm, uh, you know, I think that that phrase or that that term gets a bad rap. I mean, it's what television is supposed to be episodic and fun mm -hmm. and stories are supposed to move and there's supposed to be twists and turns and there's so much of that, which means that you as an actor have to play so many big moments. It's not like a movie or even like a mini series where you're sort of like working your way up to that big moment. You are playing a big moment in almost every episode. What is that like? We, um, we, we do try and have a through line okay. through, you know, there's, there's yeah. a, there's a, there's a story and an arc to the yeah. whole, to the whole, you know, from episode one to episode 10. Um, but there are cliffhangers and moments of drama episodically. I turn to some of my cast, uh, after like the table read halfway through the season. And I was like, if Shakespeare and the Greeks had a love child, it would be season two of Riviera because it is, we like to say operatic, but if you want to say soap opera, that's okay too. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it is, it is a heightened reality and it's big. And I, but I, but I, I, I think you're along for the ride. Like I think, oh, yeah. I think if you go with how big and sort of nuts and corrupt and complicated this world is, it's enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have time for a couple questions in the audience. Who's the question? Yeah. Hi. Oh. Um, so I love that you rejected um, the idea of your character being likable and, and really fighting for ambiguity. That being said, um, is it more fun to play the quote-unquote bad girl? What scenes are most, most fun for you to shoot? Mm, good question. Um, I, you know, I, w I, I think I would like to say bad girl, but there was a scene in... The last season, um, where my characters and Georgina's in like a particularly difficult situation, and it's just like she's at her worst. And they had written um, that she kind of is like a, like yells at this kid and forces gets really angry with him and like forces him to eat his dinner. Um, and there, and I remember saying to the writers like, no, that's that's cr that's too much. If that makes any sense, so it's a it's a little more complicated. Like I can't give you a simple answer. I feel like there there, as much as I would like to say, like I don't care about if she's sympathetic. Um, f there are things that that I've had to go like, you you lost me there. Like I need. I think we need to reel it back in because oh, there's okay. So one of the uh, one of the new characters uh, from this other family is a wealthy guy who, uh, played by Jack Fox, who Georgina is convinced 
is not a good guy. And she, uh, towards the end of the se- season, she becomes like hell bent on proving that he's a psychopath. And I think it's because she's trying to prove to herself that she's not like kind of trying to justify why she committed murder. Um, and that kind of nuance to me is what's really interesting. So again, it's like, I, I actually don't really like playing a good girl or a bad girl. I kind of like somewhere in between. Have you ever played a straight villain before? No. Do you, is that something that you That would be do? interesting. Like somebody who doesn't have a conscience. I yeah. think that would be like a mustache twirling just yeah. straight up villain. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be interesting. I would watch that. Uh right here. Hi, Julie Styles. Hi. Let's go Mets. Yes. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> What's your favorite player of the New York Mets? I like to know. Oh my God, I'm really gonna disappoint you with this answer and I have to say, I mean, I like Syndergaard. Let me just put it that way. But I'm having a really hard time keeping up with baseball because I spend so much time not in the United States. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel Are you a, a known detached. baseball fan? Is that like, is that I, prior I to? I think so. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. So. No, I mean, I think I've, yeah, I've talked about it a lot, that I, I grew up in New York and. Um, Primarily a Mets fan? Yes. Oh. But I mean, actually I'd like to say now that I just like baseball, meaning I'm not so into the like uh, the uh, rivalries between teams. It's more um, I just it's it's sort of like I like listening to baseball on the radio, and it's kind of becomes like soothing white noise to me. If that makes sense. Oh, it's very calming. I don't really keep, I don't keep track of like all the trades and whatever. I have some nostalgia for older teams, but um, nobody in Europe cares about baseball. All they want to do is talk about soccer. Yeah, that's why I work for those guys. I'm a food prep. Oh, cool. Oh, your food Thanks. prep. Okay. Um, Riviera, uh, I, I love the show. It's com- when, does it, when does it come back? When can people see it? So uh, it, it'll stream on Sundance Now, which uh, you can go to sundancenow.com. You, it'll, it's on any streaming service, but Sundance Now, um, Thursday, next Thursday, June. Let's do the math. June 20th. To be fair, this should have been my job <laughs> right now. Uh, Joy, it's so nice to have you back. Thanks for coming by. Uh, Riviera Season 2, Thursday, June 20th. Julia Styles, everybody. Let's hear it. Thank you.